we're here having a wonderful conference on uh, medical research, specifically cancer and inflammatory diseases and immunology. And we've gathered together 500 people to discuss great breakthroughs in these areas. And what's really exciting is uh, five Nobel laureates have come to join us and give their views and support us. We have uh, Jim Watson, we have Aaron Shahanover, we have Jules Hoffman, Bruce Boykler and A.D. Onath. And it's all about a collaboration between TBSI and the Weizmann Institute which is a wonderful biomedical institute that we're trying to aspire to be. Uh, they've done great research there over the years. And what's especially exciting is as well, we've signed uh, an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding, with the Weizmann Institute to allow 10 of our students to go and visit there and learn and during their PhD programs to pick up techniques and expertise over in the Weizmann. And that's being funded by the Weizmann. So that gives our students a real chance to go to a fantastic biomedical research institute. I went to medical school at the University of Chicago and I knew I wanted to be in basic research at that time, mm -hmm. but I wanted to learn what disease was about, what the big challenges were, how an organism works. The work that led to the Nobel Prize came from inquiring what is needed to get TNF made. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the very first event, molecular event, that occurs when we have an infection? Many of the diseases we have, genetic diseases, like type 2 diabetes, or systemic lupus erythematosus, or rheumatoid arthritis. These are believed to be caused by an unlucky combination of mutations. So if we want to treat it in a fundamental way, we have to think that it would be a different therapy for you than for me, than for someone else. That's what personalized medicine is like, at least in a futuristic view. Mm -hmm. There's always more to discover. And a hundred years from now, we'll look back at the year 2014 and be aghast at how naive everyone was. Protein degradation is extremely, extremely important. And aberrations in the process leads to numerous diseases. This revolution is going to encompass the entire world of medicine. Because there is always the basic question, why is it that certain patients respond to drugs? favorably, how we can sort out and predict a priori who will be the responders, who will be the partial, who will develop side effects. It's a major problem. So we need to predict it. We cannot live on statistics. So I think that you have to be, to be a little bit of adventurist, a risk taker, and mostly isolated from background noise. I mean, don't, don't listen. Do what you believe is right to do. We're speaking here about antimicrobial defenses and antimicrobial defenses in humans and in mammals in general are uh, under the control of uh, adaptive immunity mm -hmm. and for a large part. And now we understand that this is only, we knew for many years that innate immunity was, um, was present, but now we understand that innate immunity is really the most essential level of defense, the barrier epithelium, the way we really come in contact with the microbes and we defend the microbes. We have been helped enormously by the development of biochemistry, of um, refinement of analytical chemistry, and then of molecular biology, and of molecular genetics. And of course, this, which includes the sequencing of the genome. And that has really, we're not, been, we're not in the same league anymore uh, where we were in, 50 years ago or 40 years ago. It took us uh, two years and uh, challenging through pricking individually 100,000 flies to identify the molecule which was essential in our work. Today it would take us 20 flies and maybe three or four days.